ASD, um, our teachers can qualify for a medical exemption if they, um, you know, are over 65 or they have underlying health conditions. And so we had about half of our K2 team that qualified for a medical exemption. And so that means that um, technically that they can work from home. And when we talked to those folks, they said, um, you know, I'm not going to teach inside, but I do feel comfortable coming back indoors. So the outdoor space has also allowed us um, to bring 100% um, of those teachers back, and they're currently teaching outside and feeling really comfortable and great about it. So um, that was another reason that we went outdoors. Um, we also looked at health data, um, and we worked with a scientist at the University of Colorado that really focused on air quality. Um, and so um, th those are some of the main reasons. And then when we start to think about long term, um, this is uh, we want to keep these spaces up for the next 10 years, um, as long as the 10th last. And, um, you know, after, um, you know, the COVID area really utilize these spaces. And I think our teachers um, are really excited about integrating outdoor education and outdoor learning um, at Horizons um, long term. All right, so we ended up going, uh, we, we built out 11 shade structures like the ones you see on the screen here. Uh, they each cost about, in total, about $2,200, including hardware um, and the poles. We use cedar poles. Uh, really, like, these could be better designed. I saw there were some, like, designers and architects. Uh, these could be better built out. But these are waterproof, uh, heavy sails from a local sail maker. So we were really trying to kind of go for that, um, and they're a lot of they're pretty regularly used there's a couple that aren't used just because it turns out that even though it's in a nice spot it's just not a spot that people would use on campus but the two you see on the screen and and on the next slide uh actually are really used every day um throughout the day so we uh we use local cedar poles from maine um, again we were sort of uh, i had a little bit of an idea of like why don't we send some of this federal money to local people so we went with a local sailmaker and local uh, cedar poles and a local farmer for uh, straw bales, things like that. Uh, more of those shade coverings uh, being used. And then we're also putting in some of these canopies. Um, the picture you see here is actually over one of our little outdoor kitchen spaces. I'm sorry it's such a mess, but that's just how my life is right now. Uh, but uh, the, this is a smaller version of the canopies we've purchased for the high school. Um, and the price went up quite a bit. Uh, they're usually maybe about $1,600 for an 18 foot by 30 foot one, but the price uh, had went up a lot because we had to get a fire rated fabric. So it went up to about $2,300 for that size. And these are gonna primarily be used at the high school. Um, they'll provide rain coverage. Uh, you know, they also have side walls that you can put up, so. And really the whole goal of what we're trying to do is to enable teachers to be outside uh, as much as possible. So again, as Sharon said, sometimes you just got to find a space. And so when we had to pull our straw bales out from under the tent for, for the fire department, we just chose some of the spaces that we hadn't necessarily uh, improved in any way and just put the straw bales there. And that's what gets used here. You know, as this is an example of, I don't know, who knows, I'm not even sure it's a middle school class, but they were just outside making use of that space. And it really, again, you can see the students get the chance to take off their mask and, and interact with, uh, with each other in that way. Um, moving forward, which I don't have a slide on, uh, moving forward, uh, we're looking at doing uh, some fundraisers to buy some winter gear. Being in Maine, we do have L.L. Bean here, so we're, I'm hoping that we can kind of develop a relationship with them, maybe buying some winter gear for students in need. Uh, but overall, our, I'm hoping that I had been taking the philosophy of there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad uh, apparel or bad clothing. But I'm not sure that that's actually, I think it's a bit naive, um, but I do believe that uh, a good percentage of the population of this town, at least, send their kids, expect their kids to stand on the side of a mountain and go skiing for the weekend. So it's certainly reasonable for them to be properly dressed in school for a couple of hours to be able to go outside. And so now we're working with teachers on how to do that. We do have another round of the CARES Act funds coming through that we're hoping will, some of it will make our way. And we just, it's actually the proposal for all that was due today. And then we're looking at built. I'm currently sitting in one of in our greenhouse. We have uh, we have a small greenhouse, and then this one's a little bit larger. I'm hoping to build out three more that are about this size uh, on campus and use them. And we're going to have to talk with the fire department about that because they can't be dedicated classroom space. But we already have an existing farm to school program, so we're going to be using it. And 